Hello everybody. Happy Wednesday evening. Welcome to Stampin' Peace with Mary Nabe. I am Mary coming to you live from Westerville, Ohio. Um, I'm so happy to see so many of you on here today. Thank you very much for spending part of your evening with me. If you would be so kind as to share this video, I would appreciate it very much. I've got a great demonstration planned for you today um, using the Stamparatus, Stampin' Up's perfect placement stamp tool. Uh, it's kind of a mouthful, but honestly, this is one of the best tools in my craft room, and I think you can benefit from using it too, but I want you to know some of the different ways of using the Stamparatus. And tonight's Facebook Live is the third in a series. Um, so far, we've worked with the Stamparatus, and um, after... I should say using blank die cuts. Then last Wednesday, we worked with the Stamparatus and um, Builder Punches. And then tonight I wanna show you another technique for using the Stamparatus, which is called hinge step stamping. I'm going to flip my camera around now. And when, I'll, when I do that, I would love it if you would share this video. Okay, just need an extra adjustment. Um, last night I had a team game night that we did by Zoom, and it really was a lot of fun. Um, gave away a couple prizes, had some fun games, a catalog scavenger hunt, um, a product bingo, and did a couple demonstrations for them. And we just had a lot of fun talking about new products, new idea, ideas, um, and sharing inspiration. So I used my camera for the Zoom yesterday, so that's why I was making an adjustment. Okay, I want to show you in the catalog, page 144 is where all of the status <laughs> Stamparatus information and products are listed. And you'll see me use um, the small grid paper, which is something I highly suggest you have with your Stamparatus. If you want some more information or you need help ordering that, whatever, just let me know. I'm always available to help you. So I'm going to show you, well, how about if I show you two cards first? Here's one card I made with the Stamparatus hinge step stamping technique. Oh, thanks all of you for sharing. Uh, I'm so grateful, thank you. But this is one I've made with that technique. And then here's a little bit more traditional one. And they both use the same technique. So I'm going to teach you how to do this technique you can see that all the words are lined up, spaced evenly. Um, everything's right where it should be to look professional and clean and neat. So I'm going to show you how to do that, but I want you to see all the steps from beginning to end. This is my practice sheet. So I'm even going to show you the practice sheet, how to set up your stamps and everything. And I wanna show you that to let you know that that truly is an important step that I don't skip. So your stamp apparatus will come like this with two stamping plates. And it also has two magnets in back. It looks like mine is three, but one broke. Um, if the magnets are very strong, so if they get too close, they'll snap together and that's what caused that to break, but it still works. Super strong magnets. So when you pull those off, even these broken pieces will jump if they're too close. So when you remove the magnets, just put them several inches away from each other, okay? For this technique, you only need one of the stamping plates that comes with your Stamparatus. You're gonna get two of them. And when you insert 
these stamping plates, you wanna be sure that it's straight up and down, vertical position. And same thing for taking it out. If you don't have it in that straight up and down vertical position, you won't be able to put it in and take it out, okay? So for this technique, you just need the one and you do need to use it on the side. I highly suggest that you use the small grid paper that you can purchase from the annual catalog. This is so worth the money. This will make your life easier if you have the small grid paper. And yes, I've tried scrap paper. I've even tried cutting my large grid paper down here. But honestly, this is so much easier. First of all, I love that it's printed exactly like my um, the base of my Stamparatus. So you wanna put this in place. Always make sure that that grid paper goes to up to the corner. And I'm just going to hold it in place with a couple of magnets. Now, I know that I want my card front, that front layer, top layer, to be five and a quarter by four inches. You can make yours whatever size you want. I'm using the Heartfelt Wishes stamp set. It's in our holiday catalog, one of my favorites. I love that you can mix and match the different sentiments and words. Um, so this is what we're using, although I'm going to use um, Happiest Holidays to you and yours, or maybe Happiest Holidays from our family. How about happiest holidays to you and yours? That's what I'm going to use for my demonstration. So I'm gonna put these right here. And for these, I can measure the, this is, let's see. I gotta measure from the one. This is about four and a quarter inches wide. So it's just about that. It'll go a little bit beyond my cardstock that measures five and a quarter by four inches. I'm actually going to cut this down a little bit smaller. So on my samples, it was five and a quarter by four inches. I'm going to cut this five inches by three and three quarters. And that way, and the reason I'm doing this is not so much the size of the stamp, but I want to be able to add another layer of cardstock behind that, okay? Now, I always like to start around the Stampin' Up! logo. Some people will go to the corner. It's harder to get a good even image when you're stamping close to the edges or the hinges of your Stamparatus. So I like to bring it more towards the middle. So really just if I always go to this corner where the logo is, I know when I'm switching pieces of cardstock, I'm not going to make a mistake if I always go to the same spot. Now this I said measures five inches, so I'm just going to measure up five inches by three and three quarters. And each of these little blocks on the grid is a quarter inch, so that's easy to count over, measure. The reason I add the pink or the highlighted um, corner markings, it's a double check for me to make sure each time I insert my cardstock, if I'm making several of these, I might be making 30 of these Christmas cards. Each time I have a double check by having those pink marks, am I within those four pink corners? So you're gonna place, oops, we're gonna do the practice first. So this is, I'm going to pretend I have a piece of cardstock here, but this is my practice, the grid. 
best thing about the paper grid is it's great for practicing. You can see the straight lines to line up your stamps. You can measure and estimate, things like that. So this stamp is approximately one inch high. So I'm going to figure that I can stamp it five times because I'm my piece of cardstock is going to be five inches high. Now I also wanna make sure when I place it that I'm centering it within the sides of where my of what my cardstock will be. So for example, that's probably going to get cut off and I want mine centered. Now if you have a smaller stamp like maybe cheers, maybe you want all the cheers to be right down the right side or on the left side or right down the center. But just be aware of that when you're placing your stamp. And remember, this is practice, so we can always pick it up and adjust. So I think I'm gonna go right there. I'm gonna put that stamp where I'm not gonna lose it. And I'm going to use my real red. You know what, let's, um, let's do something different than real red. Let's use cherry cobbler this time. This is my all time favorite red cherry cobbler. I just, just love it. Okay, so I have that in place. I simply flip my stamping plate over and now I am ready to ink up that stamp and give it a try. Just tap the ink on. If you have the little um, stampin' spots from your paper pumpkin kits, those are a great thing to use too. Now, if you get ink on the stamping plate, don't worry about it because it's not going to be, um, the stamping plate itself is not going to contact, have contact with your paper. So you don't need to worry about that. But if you have those stamping spots, those work great. It's just a little bit less cleanup and you have a little more control. Just gonna press that down. Okay, I'd say that looks pretty good. Um, I think it's a little bit high on the one end. So I wanna straighten that out. So I'm just going to clean up my stamp first so I don't get my fingers all inky. And I like to have a, a clean, dry sponge around because then I can pick up any excess water just because when you're working with this, you don't want any of the water to drip. Um, it's rare that that will happen. If it does, you're using way too much water on your um, Simply Chamois. But anyways, I want to, the happiest, word happiest, that H, I want that to come down just a little bit from where I had it. So I'm going to try to realign it. I could have done it just right on the stamp and plate, but you can see this way too. You know, our stamps and our stickers, the rubber, um, the images or the writing might not line up on the opposite side exactly where the sticker has it. And that is the case with this one. Now, here's a trick. In order for me to see which is the new placement, I'm going to use a different color. So I'm going to just pull in a color that I know I'm not going to use so it won't get me confused. I'm gonna use this balmy blue. Again, this is practice and I just wanna see where that lays. Oh yes, now I can see I shifted it a little, it all came down a little bit, but the um, left side brought down a little bit more. So I'm going to go back now and use my red. I'm going to move, did you see what I did? I lifted the cutting plate up and I moved it down one hinge, one step. 
and that looks pretty good. So I'm going to do it again. Make sure I'm in the screen. Oops, I already moved it. Move it, ink it up. Move it again and ink it one more time. Okay, so it looks also like my top stamp and the bottom one both have about a quarter inch from the top. So I know that overall I have this centered very well. Now I'm going to clean this up and I'm going to place the second set. I'm going to leave the stamp on this cutting surf or stamping surface on this stamping plate. And I'm going to use the same stamping plate, but I'm going to take it out and flip it around and put it back at the top. So now with one cutting plate, I have one, two stamping surfaces. And if I would have the second one in there for whatever reason, then I actually have four stamping surfaces. So I want the words to you and yours to go underneath, probably right in the middle, I think. And I'm looking, you can see it's closer to the top of the rubber. The writing is closer to the top of the rubber, rubber than the bottom. But, and excuse my head if you see me looking over it, I do, I want to look over it because that helps me place it straight and get it centered if I'm looking over the top rather than in, at an angle. And that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to give it a try. I'll wipe this up. I'm going to press it onto that surface. And this time I'm going to use, where's my Mossy Meadow? Cherry Cobbler and Mossy Meadow are a great, um, very classic, rich looking color combination for your cards. And I love this color combination too, because it works great on basic white, but it's also great on very vanilla cardstock. Okay, that looks pretty good. I pressed a little hard and it looks pretty straight. I think it's pretty much where I want it to be in relation to the happiest holiday sentiment. Yep, I'm, I'm happy with that. But again, just like the first one, if I wasn't happy with the first placement of it, you just pick it up and move it and try again. And when you get it where you want it, then you're good to go. So that's why this step of um, on your scrap paper or your grid paper is so very important. So now you can see that it really looks pretty good, doesn't it? So let's stamp onto cardstock. And I just changed my mind because I was going to put it on white but I just love these colors on, um, let's see, I'm gonna do five by three and three quarter, I said. But I love the rich razzle, or not rich razzleberry, cherry cobbler and mossy meadow on very vanilla. I just think it's so classic. So that's what we're going to do. I'm gonna cut two just in case. So we can pick that up. Okay, so again, my cardstock for this one, I've cut five inches by three and three quarter. And now, since I'm stamping on the actual cardstock, I want to put that in place with the same boundaries and outlines. And I'm going to move my magnets into position too. I don't want any of the paper or the cardstock to move at all. 
Okay. So I've got that cleaned up. I'm going back to my first cutting surface and I'm going to, let me move some of these ink pads so I'm not choosing the wrong one. I'm going to ink this up with my Cherry Cobbler Stampin' Pad. And when you're doing this the first time, kind of watch, is your magnet a little too close? You don't want to get ink all over your magnet because that way when you're moving, um, uh, when you're moving your magnets and things around, you're going to get your fingers ink inky and then it transfers over to your card pieces and such. Um, Pat, I'm reading your question. Will the second stamp fit on the last happiest holidays it actually does not um i want to show you i don't know what i did with it but i actually tried that when i was making my samples i should have just hung on to it to show you but no it was like off the paper Okay, so that's another thing you can try with your scrap paper to get your answer to that before you even move on to your cardstock. But the answer to that was no, okay? So there's one. I'm gonna pick this up and move it down one step on the hinge. And you don't have to press real hard on these. You let the Stamparatus do the work for you. People who have arthritis or um, trouble with their hands have also found the Stamparatus to be a very useful tool for them. It's easier to manage this than to be managing and holding smaller stamps on blocks. here, but I want to get this magnet out of the way as much as possible. And the closer I get to the bottom of the Stamparatus, you can see that this kind of wiggles a little bit. So when I pull this over, you don't want it jumping around and this is going to interfere. You don't want it jumping around too much. So what I tend to do is just kind of put my fingers right at the hinge so it doesn't move around. All right, oh, I like the way that turned out. Okay, so I'm going to leave everything in place except I wanna move this magnet at the bottom. I'll clean off that first stamp. Remember too, when you're using your chamois, pressing your stamp into the chamois or tapping it on top of your stamp is what will lift the ink off. It doesn't work well if you're rubbing it. And I wanna be sure that if there's any water still on the stamping plate that I pick that up just so I don't transfer any to any water to places I don't want it or need it to be. All right, now I'm going to stamp the second sentiment. And this again is Mossy Meadow I'm using. a little heavier on the one side than the other. Oops. Okay. 
And I think that looks really good. What do you think? So there's a lot going on here as far as the stamp the work that the Stamparatus is doing. Number one, it has helped us keep things lined up and straight each time they're stamped. It has helped us with the spacing. And it's great for repeated stamping because it's a lot easier to do this, right? than to stamp individual pieces each time and get them straight. So now let's turn this into a card. And then if you want, we can do another if we have time. So I'm going to put a piece of Mossy Meadow cardstock behind that. Oh yes, that'll look really nice. And this is five and by three and three quarters. I'm actually going to cut this piece with a narrow border. So I'm going to cut it five and one eighth, five and one eighth by, uh, let's see, three and three quarter, three and seven eighths. Then I want a cherry cobbler card base. So I'll cut this one. So it's five and a half by eight and a half. And I'll score it at four and a quarter inches. So the Stampin' Up! Backstage event for leaders is happening um, in the next couple of days. We have our an, a little a short opening session tomorrow, um, and then Friday and Saturday, pretty much all day, well into the evening, um, we'll be learning lots of new. Um, business practices and business tips. I'm super excited about it. We have um, some great professional speakers coming to work with us. And, and this is all virtual with Stampin' Up! And then there is a long list of demonstrators who will be presenting some of their best practices for business. Um, some of them I know and are I'm friends with and others are new to me, but I'm super excited. Um, I just, I love what I do and to be able to learn more and get even better at what I do is always a delight to me. Um, let me look and see if we have some ribbon to go here. Okay, we've got a couple of choices for ribbon. That's why I didn't... Mm, that might be a little bit much for me on this particular card. I like that ribbon very much, but I'm thinking I don't want something quite that wide on this card. And this one I can't seem to get the cellophane off. Maybe we won't use that one. Here, let me do this. When push comes to shove, we do that. Oh, that gold's kind of pretty, isn't it? And then we have this more traditional metallic gold. Ooh, that's shimmery. I'm gonna do use this. I'm not, I was thinking I'd go around the card, around the cardstock. 
I'm not sure that that's what I want to do. Although that looks kind of fun. But I think I'll just make a bow with it. Hey there, Pam. Thanks for joining us. Thanks also for sharing. This ribbon is in the annual catalog. It's the narrowest, it's about a quarter inch, um, and it's called Gold Shimmer Ribbon. And then these two are actually in our holiday catalog. So if you're into ribbon, now you know where to look for them. And I think I'm just gonna add it right there. Down, no, I think I like it right here. And of course, glue dots are the best way to add bows to your work. Just a one glue dot behind the knot of the bow is perfect. Keeps it in place right where you want it. I'm gonna trim these ends just a little bit more before I put this cardstock on my card base. Okay. And what a pretty card that is. You could even embellish it more, say with some rhinestones, pearls, something like that. Um, again, here are the first two that I made. Now, one thing we should talk about too with this step uh, or with this technique is that you don't have to do all the different steps. You don't have to have a series of all those words. You can use the same practice setup to um, to actually just stamp words straight and do repeated stamping when you're making lots and lots and lots of cards, okay? Um, okay, this is gonna sound crazy, but where did I put my stamparatus? Oh, Wednesday nights, so tiring. Um, or I'm tired by the time I get here. But I'm like just looking around like I just moved my Stamparatus, but where did it go? This is when I said I need that right hand person. Okay, is that the craziest thing? Here it is, hiding back there. So let me give you an example of what I mean by that. So I'm going to, and it doesn't always have to be a full card front, even if you're just doing say, well, let's do it, say a strip of um, cardstock, but you're using that same piece on multiple cards, this setup, this technique will work the same way. So let me show you what I mean by that. And I'm just gonna start with a clean grid sheet so it's easier for you to see. Once you get used to setting up and things like that, you're gonna find that you can use some of those pieces of grid sheet um, for more than one practice card. So what I mean by this is, let's just say, I'm gonna cut this to two inches. And this is two and, um, let's see, what did I say? Two inches by five and a half. And I'm just gonna start 
all the way over here at this edge on my grid paper. It doesn't matter where you start, but it's important that you remember where you're starting each time um, when you're making multiples so that you're always putting the next piece of cardstock in the right place. So this measures two inches by five and a half. So one, two, three, four, five. And there's my half inch. And same thing here. So again, those highlighted marks, the highlighted corners, will, um, it's just an extra check to make sure that I'm getting my cardstock in the right place each time. So say, for example, I'm making 30 of these holiday cards and I need a two inch strip and I want my sentiments to line up the same way on each of them. So we'll start at the beginning again. So that's where it's going to be, right? But I'm not ready to stamp on my cardstock yet. Don't waste your cardstock. Use the grid paper, it's your scrap. So I might want it at the bottom just happy holidays. I might want happy holidays to you and yours. Um, let's switch out to, I might as well do some new things. This time, let's do, let's do the Merry Christmas this time. Merry Christmas um, and a Happy New Year from our family to you and yours. How about Merry Christmas and Happy New Year? Did I already? I think I put it back here. Here we go. All right. So I think what I'm going to do is just kind of try to get that Merry Christmas in the middle of that piece of cardstock. So I'm putting it basically right in the middle, actually a little above center because then I'm gonna put this underneath it. Maybe offset that one a little bit. So I want a space from left to right. So right now it looks like that stamp is approximately a quarter inch from the left side and a quarter inch from the right side. And it's a little bit above the center, top to bottom, which is where I want it because I wanna have some room to put that smaller sentiment underneath it. And I think it's probably pretty straight, but now I'm going to put it on my stamping plate and do a test run. And I like that very much. So let me clean this off. And then I'm going to switch to the opposite side. And I'll place and a happy new year. And I want the, I do want this one offset, but I wanna make sure it's pretty straight on there. I'm gonna give that a try. So pick up the stamp now and ink it up. Ah, perfect, I love it. So now I know for sure that I'm ready to um, stamp onto my cardstock. So I'm gonna make sure my card stock is lined up nice and straight. And the grid paper helps with that. That's why I prefer the grid paper. It's worth the few extra dollars to have the grid paper because it gives you the nice straight lines to work with already. There's no guessing. And 
since I already have that inked up, it's okay if I start with that stamp first. And I'm gonna flip around. I'm not gonna take the time to wipe that just yet. Don't necessarily have to wipe it each time. And now that's perfectly where I want it to add to a card front. So now I can take the second piece and do the same thing. Whoops. Did you see what I did? My ends weren't completely stamped. Um, so I just took that back down over it and pressed lightly until I got the edge of it stamping like it should be. Flip this around. Janelle, I'm with you. It's great to have those extra, um, that extra pack of the grid paper. And if I didn't think it was necessary, I wouldn't suggest it. So please know that what I'm teaching is what I do. This is exactly how I work on that. So we've got these two, pretend we have 30, and now we wanna put our cards together. So let's do that. I had, I've got two of the very vanilla card bases. And I wanted to, let's see, I'm gonna use the, Does anybody have this paper? What is it called? The wonderful something or other. Have to look and see, mine's covered up here. It is called Tidings of Christmas. Oh, I love Tidings of Christmas. This is awesome designer series paper. Oh, look, here's one with cherry cobbler stripes. Ooh, that works. I like this. Now, in this paper, there is white as the neutral. Um, so if you're using sheets with a lot of white, I would switch out that cardstock for the white. But I think I'm gonna go with these two. Okay. And this is a six by six pack, so you get 48 sheets. Um, and it's great for making multiple cards. And I do want a nice little border there, so I'm going to cut this to be, let me think a second, five, this is five and a half wide, so I want this five and three eighths inches wide by four and an eighth. So I'm doing five and an eighth by four and an eighth. You could also do five and a quarter by four. Oh, Janelle, thank you so much. Um, I don't know how many of you know this, but um, I went to college to get an education degree. Um, for several years, I was certified to teach kindergarten through eighth grade. Um, and I taught three years in Ohio, then I taught a year in, where was I, in just in um, Portsmouth, Virginia, when Peter was in the Navy. And then we had Andrea and then I became a stay-at-home mom. And when my kids went to school, I was a professional volunteer. I loved to tutor. Um, I managed the Ohio Reads program back in the day at our elementary school. Um, teaching, I just love it. So no, I don't have a business degree at all. I don't have a marketing degree. Um, that's all stuff I've worked hard to, oh, this would have been pretty too. Look at that. Ooh, that's pretty too. Oh, well, I've already got my um, adhesive on this. But that just goes to show you, see, you can make multiple cards, same layout, do the same stamping, 
but then switch it up with the designer series paper you have on your front. That's a good way to use up your um, designer series paper too. I've got a little ink there that I wanna get up before I make a mess. And this is where that dry sponge comes in handy. Okay. Ooh, I like this. I love it. Okay, now I'm going to add these strips that we stamped with our Stamparatus. How many of you watching actually have the Stamparatus and use it regularly? I um, posted to one of the Facebook groups I'm on, posted a, a card from a previous, um, maybe the last, it might've been the last Facebook Live where we did the, um, use the Stamparatus with the Strawberry Builder Punch. And somebody commented, I have a Stamparatus, but it's still in the box. I've never used it. Maybe I should get it out and play with it. I thought, oh yes, please get it out. Mary Lou has the Stamparatus. Janelle, I know you do. Hi, Stella. But yes, please don't let your Stamparatus or other tools um, go unused. If you ever need help, you just call me and ask, message me. I'll do my best to help you out or at the very least guide you in the right direction. Stampin' Up! has some awesome videos that you can, we can all take advantage of. Now I'm deciding I might want these other bows, these other ribbons. So I'm just going to try out the different ones. <laughs> Pam, use, you use yours all the time. Wonderful. I love hearing that. Sharon loves hers. Yes. Oh, yes. That, the Stamparatus works great with the Mini Messages stamp set, too. Oh, look at that. What a simple card, but very... Um, the word I keep going to is rich, and I don't mean money rich. You know what I get, what I mean by that, right? You get me. The rich colors... Super classic. Look how gorgeous this is. And people, I was just winging this. I wanted to show you how you can manage that um, setting up step on your with your grid paper on the Stamparatus in the same way that you would prepare your hinge stamping. Oops, I think I wanted a little smaller and a little lower. Let's see if I can pull this off carefully. When you make your bows, always make sure you um, give yourself enough ribbon to work with so that you can play with those loops and tails until you get it the size that you want. That's why a lot of times you see me when I'm making bows, I, I don't cut a length of ribbon. I'll just start making a bow while it's on, still on the bolt. The ribbon is still on the bolt. Ooh, what do you think? I think the knot could be smaller, but I, otherwise I like it. And then, oh, you know what we could use on this one? Either of these golds would be pretty here. Where's the other gold? That's pretty, but how about if we bring in some more of that um, evening evergreen color. And I've got two ribbons in evening evergreen. Got that sheer one. And then this is pretty thick, which I like really well. It's bold, but your bows do get a little thick 
um, which can make mailing a little bit more difficult. I think this ribbon, um, the sheer ribbon, works nicely and it doesn't create so much bulk as far as your cards going through the mail. When I use the sheer ribbon, I do not put extra postage on the envelope. I just pay the standard first class postage and it seems um, they've always gone through because there's, it's sheer, it's thin, it doesn't create a lot of bulk. Whereas some of those thicker ribbons like this woven ribbon really does when you're making bows. I guess this is Evening Evergreen and I use Mossy Meadow ink. Is that okay? It doesn't, you don't really see the difference there. But as I'm looking at this, now I'm thinking, hmm, and we don't have a Mossy Meadow ribbon. I might just go back to the gold ribbon just because of that. Are you very anal about that? You know, color, Stampin' Up! makes color coordination so easy that it's hard for me to let something like that slip. And I think most people probably wouldn't even know that that's a different green, but I know. <laughs> so I'm gonna switch to the gold that I was originally going to use. It's like Stampin' Works, Stampin' Up! has worked so hard to give us all this wonderful um, color coordination of our products that I don't wanna mess it up. Isn't that funny? And like I said, many people probably wouldn't even um, notice the difference but you know when you're making something handmade it's like a gift from the heart so I want it to be just right and well thought out and I'm oh with um this week's backstage event I might Two of my friends are coming and we're going to do the virtual event together. So Susie, my upline, is coming from Cincinnati and then my friend Joyce Whitman is coming from Beaver Creek, which is near Dayton, Ohio. Um, and I also have um, one member of my team, Rita, who will also be participating in the virtual event. She's not able to come to my house. Um, she just has a lot going on, but I'm excited that she's participating in that as well. All right, so let's review. We did hinge stamping. I showed you my two samples, and then I showed you how to do it, and we made this Happy Holidays card. And then I showed you how you can use the same steps to set up your Stamparatus for repeat stamping um, and made these two cards. All right, would anybody like to win a card tonight? If you are with me, we're coming to the close of this um, third Stamparatus Technique video in my series. And all you have to do is type the word Stamparatus in the comments, okay? Many of you are still on and still watching, so type the word Stamparatus in the comments and you will have a chance to win one of these cards tonight. You'll have to, whoever the winner is, you'll have to just be surprised. Oh, one thing I should say, when you are watching on stampinpeace.com when you're watching me live and you have the chance to win a card, be sure to like this page. I don't mean like the post. At the top, you wanna like, click the box that says like. 
the reason for that is when you're following me, it's easier for me to contact you, message you, if I need to get your address for mailing a prize. Lately, I've um, been messaging people um, and I try to tag them in the congratulations post that they won the card or whatever. But if they haven't liked, the tag doesn't go to them. Um, and then I'm kind of scrambling, trying to get their addresses. And sometimes people miss winning, getting the card that they won. So if you would do that, I'd be very appreciative. All right, Amelia, hi, I didn't realize you were watching. And Carol was on, hi, Kathy Sheely. Kathy, I'm so glad you had the opportunity to go out to dinner with your granddaughter. That must be very fun. Sharon says, add some bling. Oh yes, we could add lots of bling to any of these cars or all of them. Pam says she learned a lot about using her Stamparatus just by playing with it. Yes, absolutely, play with it. Pat, do not do not be afraid of that Stamparatus. Break it out, use it, do not be afraid. Um, like I said, I, this is my third video in three weeks using the Stamparatus, and I'm sure there are lots of others out there as well. Stella says she loves hers. Amelia has one. Donna has one. Awesome. So if you have a Stamparatus already, I hope that you have learned um, something new in terms of what it can do for you and it, how it can make your um, stamping and paper crafting a little bit easier and more efficient, more fun, and less stressful. If you don't have a Stamparatus and you're interested in learning more, please look at some of my other videos or you can contact me. I'd be happy to um, talk to you about it and how it can help you. Have a great Wednesday evening. Um, I typically do a Facebook Live on Friday afternoons. I don't know that I will be on it all on Friday just because I will be participating in that Stampin' Up! leadership event. Uh, that leadership training. So if I have the chance to get on, maybe I'll even pop on with my friends, Susie and Joyce, and introduce you to them. Um, but I can't say what time it will be. Um, but if I don't see you on Friday, I will be back here on Stampin' Peace with Mary Nabe live at 11 a.m. on Monday. Have a great night.